on dark Calvary. There's a man hanging by my side. Bonds of love have him bound as his blood falls to the ground. From the stripes, the crown of thorns that he wears. Not long ago, my voice was heard. Mingled with those scorning words As I mocked His holy name Then in some amazing way Grace then gave me strength to say When thou comest into thy kingdom O Lord, remember me Tell me what did he ever, ever see in me? My yesterdays are in shambles. The grave's my destiny, and this my song through endless ages, throughout all eternity. Tell me what did he ever see? of all eternity he then turned and looked at me and I thought how foolish can I be Lord I can never work for thee for I am in this old tree and my past it's Filled with misery and shame I can't believe those words I hear Falling down upon my ear A display of grace so full and free Lots of joy I fill my eyes as I hear these words my surprise, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Tell me what did he ever, ever see in me? My yesterdays are in shambles that graves my destiny and this my soul. Through endless ages, throughout all eternity, tell me what did he ever see in me? And this my soul, through endless ages, throughout all eternity, tell me what did he ever see? Hebrews chapter 12 this morning, I'm going to preach a message entitled, uh, Caution About Failure, Failure, or Run Carefully, should be a better title. Uh, we need to run carefully. The Bible talks about the Hall of Fame of Faith in Hebrews chapter 11, that's the, the compass about with so great a cloud witness in verse 1 of chapter 12, and then he says we need to do something about it. We need to run. We need to find our lane. We need to be faithful, and we need to have a ministry, amen? Not sit so soaking sour, but I mean get busy, as Brother Alex taught this morning, and be a servant of God because God's called all of us to serve the Lord, amen? Because we're saved, we ought to serve, amen? Because we love Him, we ought to serve. And But you know, sometimes the devil will try to knock us down. And we can be knocked down, but we're not knocked out. Thank God that the Lord doesn't disown us or divorce us. He loves us, and He knows how to draw us back. And sometimes He has to discipline us, verse 3 through 11 of this chapter. And folks, I don't know if you've ever been disciplined by the Lord, but uh, you don't want to be because He knows exactly 
what it'll take for your will to break. Amen. And I've been through it. I didn't want for 11 months of my life because I put soccer before God. And I'm going to tell you something, friend. The Lord knows how to get your attention. Amen. Uh, somebody said, well, if I believe you are saved and saved forever, then I'd live like I want to. There's two problems with that. Number one, you don't want to. Number two is you're scared to. Amen. I have a heavenly Father, Hebrews 12, 6, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Verse 8 says you're little illegitimate if you don't receive chastening. In other words, you're not really saved if the Father doesn't come after you and discipline you. I know I had a mama because every time I got out of line, here comes mama. And she wasn't carrying a, a, a wishing one. She was carrying a hickory switch. <laughs> Amen. And I will tell you something. I needed a whole lot more than I got. But I'll tell you what, I thank God for the ones I did get. I never thought I'd say that because I thought she was going to kill me. But, uh, folks, she helped me. And I'll call her blessed when I see her face to face in heaven. But let's stand on the Word of God. We'll start with verse 12. Don't you love preaching through uh, a Bible? Well, not preaching, listening. Not all of y'all can preach, but some of you can. And uh, teach through the Bible. That's, that, that's the theme around here. We believe in the primacy of the Word of God and the primacy of preaching. Amen. I love singing. I love all that goes on. But I'm going to tell you something. The most important part of every service is when the Word of God is taught or preached. Amen. Say amen. Because the Word of God will change your life. It is the Word of God, not the Word of man. Let's get to preaching. Look at verse, uh, I think I'll back up to verse 11 just so you can see. The context. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyful or joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, after it yieldeth the peaceable, listen now, fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Amen. And here's the text Wherefore lift up thy hands which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. Let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness, hope you'll get the message last week, the root of bitterness springing up troubleth you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicators, fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterwards when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. There is a deadline, and you can cross it this morning. Don't do it. Receive what God wants you to have this morning from His Word because He is trying His best and He will get the message to your heart if you'll receive it. Amen? You may be seated as I pray. Father, thank you for the good song service. Thank you, Brother Randy, and his faithfulness. Long for the day that we can have the choir back and God long for the day that we can um, have a lot of things back. But until then, we're just going to be faithful. We're going to try to keep preaching. And Lord, keep meeting. I do pray for Brother Tom Hatley and Fellowship Baptist Church up in Maryville. I know their hearts are broken. They had to shut it down this morning. I pray they'll be able to open up soon that you'll heal all the cases up there and God, you'll protect the pastor. God, we just thank you for the strength and health to be here this morning. I do not take it for granted. I thank you, God, for answering prayer, uh, Lord, uh, Friday when I felt so sick. And God, I thank you, dear God, for... Uh, uh, helping me have the strength to be here today. And Lord, I thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of preaching your word one more time before the rapture could take place. And so, Lord, help us to be faithful. We can't be much, but we sure can be faithful. And God, we don't want to be a failure. We don't want to be a castaway. We don't even want to end like Moses in by messing up the typewriter and hitting the rock twice and hitting it at all because, Lord, we learned this morning he shouldn't even hit it. But Lord, he ought to be obedient. And so, Lord, teach us to trust and obey where there's no other way for us to be happy but also no other way to, for us to be holy and you get the glory. And so, Lord, please help us in Jesus' name. 
touch hearts, change lives. We'll give you the credit and glory for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, in verse 1 through 4, we saw the consecration uh, for living. And then verse uh, 5 through 11, the chastisement from God. And sometimes He whips us and He knows exactly what it will take. And thank God, for whom the Lord loveth, He scourged and chastened every time you see it. I always knew my mother loved me when she wore me out, and I needed it. And then the, I want you to see, third of all, this morning, the caution about failure. The caution about failure. I want to tell you something, friend. Pride comes before fall. It also comes before contention. We don't ever want to admit we're wrong, <clears throat> that we're sorry. Please forgive me, as I preached on last week. Um, but I want you to see in these, these verses uh, some keys to avoid failure. I don't want to fall. I know I will fall, but I don't want to fail. I think we can get back up. Say amen. Thank the Lord. The Lord went all the way to Calvary. He didn't go halfway. Amen. And he had a rough road of rejection and hurt. And his own people rejected him. How about that? That'd be a tough thing to have. Come to this earth to redeem somebody, and they say, crucify him. And so I want you to see this, some simple principles, four or five. Number one, I want you to see in verse 12, strengthening for the race. Strengthening in the race. You know, I see a picture here of despondency. Here's a person on the verge of fainting. How many has ever fainted before? Raise your hand. <clears throat> okay, good. I'm not the only one. I remember one time I was appointed at Davison's. I was working my way through Georgia State University. The scholarship for soccer didn't pay at all, so I had to pay some of it. And my mother said, I ain't paying anything. You're going to learn to work. I said, okay, Mom. I got a job at Davison's. That's a department store. That dates me. There ain't no Davison's anymore, amen? I think they changed to Macy's. And they assigned me to take these bunch of girls to the clinic to get their blood test. Uh, so they could be new employees of the church of the um, of Davison's, and I had to get a blood test because I was new too. And so I remember uh, I was first in line, and I remember they took my blood, and I looked at my blood, and I passed out in the floor. And I want to tell you something: none of those girls would ever date me. They thought I was a wimp. No, and uh, I, I thought, my word, what in the world's happening? And I made the excuse I hadn't ate in four days. I think it was only about four hours. And uh, boy, I was embarrassed. I mean, they picked me up off the floor. It was just a simple blood sample, amen? And folks, I don't mind seeing other people's blood, but mine own makes me a little faint. But you know, there's a lot of people that are spiritually fainting today, amen? And I believe it's breathing. The Bible says in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, that we ought to pray and faint not. And I believe that folks, we ought to, we ought to praise God and we ought to that's exhaling, and we ought to pray to God. That's inhaling. And some people are just not breathing. Amen. We need to breathe. Amen. We need to breathe spiritually. And every step's a blessing from God. Every breath's a blessing from God. And folks, listen, they were enduring chastening. And he said, don't faint, but repent. Look at verse 7. It says, if you endure chastening, endure chastening. You know, God chastens those that want to go back to the law. That's the whole book of Hebrews. God chastens those that want to go back to self-dependency. Amen? Self-sufficiency. I'm going to tell you something, friend. God can knock the pride out of you. Say amen right there. I've had it knocked out of me. How about you? You know, I think I got it together. By the time I think I got it together, I fall flat on my face because I've depended upon my Self. And folks, you need to watch that. And I need to watch that. And war against the flesh, the devil, and the world, our three enemies. But I want to tell you how not to faint. Repent. Repent of self sufficiency. Repent of self uh, sufficiency that I can make it without Jesus. He's precious. Thank you for that song, brother. And we need personal revival this morning. I need personal revival. How can I say we need personal revival? I need personal revival. We endure chastening. And the Bible says, Wherefore, lift up thy hands and hang that hang down, which hang down, and the feeble knees. 
Uh, I never thought that I'd have trouble uh, with feeble knees, but it's hit me lately. Amen. I try to walk on the elliptical at least five minutes a day. No, uh, 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes a day. My wife can testify that. I don't hit every day. But I have it right in my office at home. And I feel like I need to stay in shape. And y'all can tell I'm in perfect shape. But um, it wasn't for all that fried chicken. But we need personal revival or we're going to faint, not, not physically, but spiritually. We live in stressful times today. And I want to tell you something, friend. The devil would love to use this stress to distress you. But folks, what we need to do is be impressed on how much we need God. How much we need God. Folks, I want to tell you something. The Lord will knock the starch out of you. I mean, not the starch, the pride out of you. And that too, probably. And folks, the feeble, uh, the hands hanging down, drooped, and feeble knees that's almost paralyzed. You can't get up as quick as you used to. You're a little slower than you used to, but I want to tell you something, friend. You can be steady. You can keep on going for God. And the race is not a, a sprint, it's a marathon. It's not even a marathon, it's a relay. God wants you to hand the baton off. And listen, I want to tell you something. When you're faithful, the next generation comes up and says, I'll take that baton. Amen. Amen. I want to be counted faithful. Folks, when I die, I want to die on the front line. As old brother Dean McNeese sings, we ought to have him back to sing that song. I want to die on the battlefield for the Lord. Amen. I don't want to die as a casualty. I don't want to die as a castaway. I don't want to die a wall. I want to be on front lines. You know what the front line is? Faithful. Then number two, I see not only the strength in the race, but I see the serenity in the race. Look at verse 14. Follow peace with all men. Follow peace with all men. I want to tell you something, friend. We as Christians ought to be encouraged by each other. Say amen. But we need to deal with the root of bitterness. I preached on that last week, and I think it was a much needed message in my life. I hope you got something out of it. Amen. I appreciate, appreciate those that reposted and shared it with their friends. And one friend said, can I share this? I said, keep on sharing it. Praise God. Share it till the sun goes down for all I care. I don't preach just to have one time listened to. I want it to be listened to many times. Amen. Folks, I believe God dealt with our hearts last week. I know God dealt with my heart. And I want to tell you something. Constantly I have to battle bitterness as a pastor. Because I could take this thing personal. But I don't want to take it personal. As a matter of fact, I'm not important enough to take it personal. I believe I need to represent the Lord Jesus Christ. When I teach soul winning, I teach soul winning this way. You're going for Him. You got His Word. And if they, if they try to hurt you, you're not that important. It's who you represent they're trying to hurt. So just keep on keeping on. Amen. Smile, be polite, and go back again. Or if you're really a chicken, send your wife. No, but anyway, listen, thank God. Thank God that we can go on for God and realize that we can have edification, encouragement, and helping others not to fail in the race. We need to pursue peace. Amen. We need to pursue peace. Look at Psalms 34, verse 14. Psalms 34, verse 14. The Bible says this. Verse 12 is good too. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Isn't it good to, to be serving the Lord? I count it a privilege. I count it an honor. I count it a divine encounter with people. This is verse 12. Uh, what man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may, may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. You know, some people poison the hour with, their, with, the, with the guile, negative talking, spewing criticism. But look at verse 14. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it and pursue it. Folks, we ought to go after it. We ought to be peacemakers. 
I like that song the choir sang many years ago. Um, I know the peace speaker. Isn't that it? I know him by name. And folks, he is, his name is the Holy Ghost. And he is the Prince of Peace. He is the Spirit of Peace. And folks, I don't know about you, but when you have everything right with others, you have everything right with God, you have peace. Amen. Amen. You ever had a fight with your wife? You all look, no, I don't. Yeah, come, come to the altar for lying. But anyway, yes, you've had a fight with your wife. You've been married over two months, maybe two weeks, maybe two days. I heard somebody got in a fight on their honeymoon. Praise God. Y'all started out good. But anyway, listen, folks, we need to pursue peace, and we need to make up, and God is there waiting to forgive you, and you don't have to have a root of bitterness. You don't have to go around mad at the world and mad at yourself and mad at God. That's bitterness. And then I want you to know, folks, we can follow peace, and, and folks, serenity in the race is so important. You ought to the peace of God upon your soul that God's leading you. You're in God's will. There's nothing better. Nothing better. And I want, I, want to, I, want, I want to come to the next point. There ought to be sanctification in the, in the race. Sanctification. Look at verse 14. It says, follow peace with all men and holiness. Now here's where I'll lose a lot of you. If you think, well, I'm Baptist, I ain't holiness. Folks, you ought to be holy. Holiness means God-likeness. Godliness means God-likeness. Our goal is not to be like the preacher. Our goal is not to be like the deacon. Our goal is to be like Jesus. Every day of our life, we ought to have one ultimate goal. I want to please you, Lord. I want to be like you. I can't be like everybody else. I've tried, and when I do that, uh, I remember a lot of times... In the past, people wear these double-breasted suits. They want to be like Dr. Lee Robinson. And then there was a time in, in my life where all the preachers were <clears throat> clearing their throat, want to be like Jack Howells. And folks, when they tried to do that, Jack Howells wasn't here, they wasn't here, so nobody was here. Say amen. Folks, you try to imitate somebody, you, they ain't going to nobody be here. But folks, you'll be yourself. Let God use you in the unique way that God's called you. You can have peace with God and peace of God. But folks, you can have that sanctification. You have that holiness. Follow holiness. Pursue it. Folks, the desire of your life ought to be to be like Jesus. Holy, holy, holy. We never sing that song, uh, Brother Man. We need to pull it out of the doxology or whatever because we think it. I think it's so formal. But I want to tell you something, friend. He is holy. He's thrice holy. And we ought to sing it from our heart, but we ought to believe in our soul, and we ought to portray it. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, would you? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, talking about holiness. Everybody wants to be popular. Everybody wants to blend in. God help you young people. Don't live by peer pressure. Have holy peer pressure. Let the Spirit of God put some peer pressure on you. Positive peer pressure is the local church. Say amen. amen. Folks, we ought, to have a, we ought to be edified to be holy. We ought to be encouraged to be holy. Where am I going? 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Thank you, Grant. So, or maybe that was Andrew. I don't know. I got a front pew to keep me straight over here. But 2 Corinthians chapter 6, look at it. The Bible says in verse um, 11, O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you. Our hearts is enlarged. You're not straightening us, but you're straightening your own bowels. Now for a recompense of sake, I speak unto you, my children, if you be also enlarged, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Amen. Say amen right there. That's the word of God if you'll say amen. amen. It says don't be, uh, don't be, your best friend should be godly. Your best friend ought to be in a church. Your best friend ought to be holy. You'll be just like your best friend if they're ungodly. A lot of people are addicted to unholiness. But look at this. It says, For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion with light with dark? Come on now. Your best friend's a heathen. You've got problems. You might even marry wrong. That'd be bad too. Amen. But look at this. And what con concord hath Christ with Belial? What part hath that believeth with an infidel? 
What agreement hath the temple of, the, of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. Can somebody say amen right there? And God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Listen now. Wherefore, come out from among them, amen. and be ye separate, saith the Lord, right. and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Then stop there. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. That's disposition, little s. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. God's called us to perfect holiness in the fear of God. You know what that means? Be separate. But you know what it also means? Verse 18, love God more than you love the world. Love God more than you love yourself. Amen. See, most people are so in love with themselves, they think this party is about them. Number one, this ain't a party. This is a church. Amen? And it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Him. Amen. And we're here to glorify Him. Right. We're to preach for Him. We're to sing for Him. And if you don't believe that helped when there was nobody in this place except little old Cody and Brother Jason and Miss Rebecca and maybe one and Brother Randy, uh, I had to preach to him because they'd already heard it. No, the, and, and, and and they and I only had five here and four of them went to sleep. No, not really. But I'll tell you something. Thank God we can minister it unto Him, unto Him. We're here for Him. We're here for His glory. In other words, you're created for His glory. You've been sustained for His glory. And you definitely should live for His glory, and thus you ought to serve for His glory. Sanctified, thrilled, filled, and satisfied. Most new preacher, he'd answer the phone. Hello? They'd say, how are you doing? They'd say, he'd say, sanctified, thrilled, filled, and satisfied. We ought to be satisfied. Amen. Folks, listen. Pr the precept of holiness is follow. Follow. I want to tell you something. You're, you're, you are a product of who you follow. Folks, you listen, listen. You read bad books, you're going to be bad. You listen to bad music, you're going to have a bad attitude. You say, where did that thought come from? I'll tell you where it come from, from a multi-million dollar industry called rock and roll music. Amen. Boy, it's getting quiet now, praise God. Let me just get a little, dwell a little deeper. Multi-million dollar industry called country music. That's what we Southerners like. Hey, man, a little twain here, a little twain there. We catch the wrong twain when we get those messages in our mind. Right. Somebody said on Facebook, and it was good. There's not everything bad on Facebook. You can use Facebook for the glory of God and for ministry if you, can, if you want to. said, I've got that song, With All My Heart, or whatever the name of it is, in my heart, and I can't get it out. I can't get it out. I said, good. That's what it ought to be. Amen. That's a lot worse things to be in your, your, your mind, your psychic. Well, I'll be going around saying, my heart my desire. Praise God. I've, that's all I know about it, but I'll sing that 15 times a day. <laughs> How about amazing grace? How sweet the sound throughout the day. How about holy, 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 Lord God Almighty through the day. What do you sing? What's your song? What song's in your heart? I'll tell you what song's in your heart, what you listen to all the time. He said, Preacher, I just come for a little Sunday morning message. You have to get to meddling in my life? Yes. Because the Bible says in the race, in the race, you can fail. In the race, you can get feeble. In the race, you can faint. Praise God, what we need to do is stay faithful. And so the prerequisite of holiness is this. Look at verse 14 back in our text, Hebrews chapter 11, uh, 12. Don't you love this chapter? It says, which no man shall see the Lord. Folks, listen, without holiness, there's the emphasis. Follow peace with all men and holiness without, which no man shall see the Lord. Without holiness, you won't see the Lord. What's the Bible say? The pure in heart shall see the Lord. Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the Lord. I want to see the Lord, don't you? We can be clouded on the race of life with sin, self, and the world. 
And we can get so cloudy. I used to run uh, cross country. Don't know why in the world I did that. I used to, I used to run the two mile. I don't know why in the world I did that. My best friend Billy Collins was a two mile champion of the state of Georgia. And he said, "Come run with me." I never ran with him. He was already showered and on a date time I got in. Amen. He said, how, how did you do? I said, I finished. And all I was doing was running for soccer. I want to stay in shape for soccer. That was my sport. But I want to tell you something, friends. We got a far better race to run than some flimsy sport. We're to run for Jesus. We're to be faithful. We're to be holy. We're to have peace. For, for, for the Bible tells us without that, without that, you won't see him. You won't see Him. You won't see His blessings. Folks, there's the abundant life, but it takes obedience. It takes being in the will of God. Now, this is the third mention of without in the word of, of Hebrews. Look at look at back in uh, Hebrews 9, 22. Hebrews 9, 22. Y'all with me? It says, and, all, it says all, and almost all things are by the law purged with the blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission. Surely I'll get an amen right there. I've been fishing for one right now, but here, listen. Folks, without the blood, there is no salvation. Without the blood, you're going to hell instead of heaven. Folks, the blood is essential. It's the precious blood of the Lamb. Look at verse uh, Hebrews 11, 6 for the second without. I like these word studies. It says this, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. So without the blood, without faith, and then it goes the third, third one is without holiness, you'll not see God. Men need to pay attention to God's demand. And God demands this one thing, be ye holy, for I am holy. This ain't going over too good, but I don't care, I'm going to keep preaching. Amen. Number four, number five. Flying through this, Brother Alex, I'll be finishing before I know it too. Shepherding in the race. This is my main point, so I'll have to finish it tonight. But look at verse 15. The Bible says this, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up, troubleth you, and thereby many be defiled. I want you to look at the word looking diligently, the two words. And folks, that literally means oversee. It means shepherd, looking diligently. How is that done? Folks, it's done through the local church. We should have a shepherd. Now, I know who the shepherd is, and I hope I never take his glory, and I hope I never put my hands on his church. But I am the under-shepherd, and God's called me to be under-shepherd. I, I don't take my orders from the deacons. I don't take my orders from the congregation. I don't take my orders from my wife. Wouldn't that be good if y'all had a hen-pecked pastor, Amen. Honey, what should I preach this morning? You say, preach on you ought to get right with God. No, 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 no. Folks, listen, listen. I take my orders and get my messages from God. And that's kind of special. That I can deliver to you what God gives me. And that I can be a shepherd. I love pastoring. This stuff that we're going through is contrary to my nature. Uh, we're a very friendly church, but you ought to see us when we can be friendly. Right now, we're afraid to be friendly. I'm afraid you might, I ain't going to say it. But anyway, listen, listen, God help us to realize the church is more than some kind of club where you join to get your benefits because you pay your tithes, you got your rights. No, friend, the church, the church, is a fellowship of genuine, genuinely converted Christians. Amen. Amen. You can't join this church unless you're saved. Amen. Matter of fact, if you're not saved, you probably don't want to join this church. But if you are saved, I recommend this church. You saw you're getting off in church membership. You know how much I talk about church membership, about that much. But I'll tell you what, friend, maybe it needs to be talked about. I had a very intelligent and... Uh, probing question asked me a couple of weeks ago. It says, what does it exactly mean to join the church? I thought, praise God, what a question. So I began to think about it. 
I came up with four things. Number one, to join the church is to believe that only genuinely converted Christians are to be members of the local church and that we ought to have a right to ask a person their testimony before they join the church. Amen. And we ought to see evidence of that testimony. Amen. Say amen. Some godly fruit, say amen. Right. Increasing holiness in their life is a godly fruit. When the church approach, uh, when a church approaches membership in that way, uh, members can function as a church witness that we display the characteristics of genuine Christianity. He's saved. He's my brother. He's my sister. She's my sister. Not he. She's my sister. Don't laugh at me. I'll make more mistakes than you ever know. And folks, number two, the church membership signifies an individual commitment to grasp hold of one another in mutual love and discipleship. Folks, I want to tell you something. By identifying ourselves with a particular church, we let the pastor and the other members of the local church know that we intend to be committed to attend, to give, to pray, and to serve. Amen. We don't just join up. And I get so sick and tired of people calling and saying, what programs do you have for my little Johnny? I almost want to say, listen, with that attitude, I don't know if I can help Johnny or not because you've got you to gotta have the program. It's called the home, amen? And folks, what can I get out of this? And, how, and I understand that. They want to make sure they got a full program. But I want to tell you what the program is. Jesus. I want to tell you what the program of a local church is. Lifting Jesus. Glorifying Him. And so we have a commitment to Christ in serving each other. It's a covenant relationship with the church and its leadership. Folks, listen, we, we are committed to, it's a commitment to join a church. You're making a commitment that you will serve, not just sit in a pew, but serve God and be faithful and then help those that are not in the race, those that are hung down feeble and, and paralyzed in discouragement. You come alongside of them. And thank God the very essence of worship is bless His holy name. And that's why we ought to come, not just to get a blessing, but to bless His holy name. But I tell you, second of all, to be a blessing. Folks, God's calling laborers in this church. And folks, I pray for laborers every day. We ought to be committed to mutual love and discipleship. Thirdly, church membership should signify a regular responsibility that involves each other's lives and the purpose of the gospel. There's a lot of self-centered ways related to church membership. I want to join this club for the benefits that can, that, that, that can be offered me. As soon as it starts demanding more than I feel I'm receiving, I'll just shop around and find another club. That's not the church. I want to tell you how you get the most out of this church. Serve God. Find a place to serve God. Find a place to minister. Find a new Christian and disciple them. Find a ministry. Folks, God help us not just to sit, soak, and sour. Church membership is a commitment to serve one another. Church membership is not a set of rights that I've purchased with my tithe. It's a set of responsibilities that I commit myself to carrying out both for and with the members of a gospel fellowship with joy. It's a joy to be here this morning. I just want to help somebody. I want to be an encouragement to somebody. Thank God. I'm going to tell you something. The happiest person at the 10 o'clock hour was Brother Alex when it was over. No, when, when he could teach the Word of God to more than four or five young singles. He is nervous, but I'll tell you what, he's he probably feeling pretty good right now. God used me. Not bragging on the message or the messenger, just the opportunity to serve God, the opportunity to maybe encourage a dear saint that's been in a, a ter having a terrible week, to encourage somebody to be saved. Folks, listen, if God doesn't use our life, what is our life about? God has called us to be vessels. God has called us not just to receive, but to receive and give. What is your ministry? Folks, number four, church membership signifying inward love for God and for His people. 
an inward love for God and His people. I'm sorry that's too little. I didn't want to use two pages. Folks, it signifies the inward love for God and His people. Folks, I want to tell you something. It's a covenant to help. It's a covenant to encourage. It's a covenant to even rebuke and be rebuked. In other words, we show that we want to love God's people and be loved by God's people. I don't know about you, but if my life ended this week, and it could, to be the pastor of this church, the same church, my first church, I never pastored another church, has been the joy of my life. Besides my salvation and my marriage. It's third on the list. And I want to tell you something, friend. I long to be here. I long to preach. I love it. I love you. I believe you love me. I don't think we've got any major schisms and splits in this place. If they if they're there, I'll be glad to come to your house and talk to you. But folks, I want you to know first John chapter. Four talks about this and tells us that we should love the brethren. And 1 John 3.18 says, We know that we pass from death into life because we love the brethren. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother who he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? 1 John 4.20 20 and 21. And this is the commandment have we from him that we who that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. Amen? This ought to be a place of love. It ought to be a place of joy. It ought to be a place of commitment. And I'll just be honest with you. I need you. I need you. I need your encouragement. I need your faithfulness. I need your prayers. And I'd be a self-sufficient, arrogant, prideful being if I didn't think I needed this church. And you ought to feel that way too. You ought to feel that way too. You ought to feel like, I need a place to serve God. I need a place to encourage others. I need a place to be faithful. I need a place in the race to be shepherd. Diligently look! And folks, I believe that means diligently look to Jesus but I mean that also means diligently look to the other racers and as they faint, help them. But no, no, I got to get ahead. This will make me feel better. If they fall flat on their face, that'll make me look better. So praise God, let's just shoot our wounded. We're the only army that shoots their wounded. Oh, he's backslid. You know, do away with him. Makes me look better. Oh, no, folks, it ought to break your heart when the weakest person faints. Hey, it ought to break your heart when the most encouraging person gets discouraged. You ought to break your heart. When the most faithful want to stop being faithful. I'm just sharing my heart. But I'll say this, friend. One of the greatest things about the race is that we're running for Him, but we're running for with each other. And we have each other. It's a beautiful fellowship, isn't it? It's a beautiful army, isn't it? It's a warfare. And if you want to get isolated, that's exactly what the devil wants you to do. You want to get separated, that's exactly what the devil He divides and conquers. He'll do it in your family. He'll do it with your children. But praise God in this race, looking diligently, you ought to shepherd one another. I heard about this. Man, the clock's out. I'm free. Praise God. I'll just keep on preaching. But anyway, um, Brother Cody, just, just take, keep it off. I heard about this Special Olympics. All these precious little old kids with Down syndrome was lined up on the starting line. And it took them a while just to get them all lined up because, you know, they got other things in mind and other places to be. They didn't know they are going to run this race or not. And they all lined up, about 10 or 12 of them. They fired that gun, half of them jumped back instead of going forward, scared, scared the life out of them. But in this Special Olympics, they started running, and buddy, they, they, the parents was right with them, 
And they were trying to encourage them, go, go across that line, go across the line. You be first, you be first. That's why all parents want to spoil their children. You be first, you be first. You be the most popular. No, what you ought to be is the most diligent servant. You ought to love God more than any child around that they might warm up to Jesus and see him. They ran that race and about one third. It wasn't, it wasn't 10 steps. They got, out, they got out of the race. One little old boy, he tripped over his left foot, fell down. He was just scratched. He started crying. And all 10 of those little kids stopped. And they turned around and looked at their little friend. They didn't look at him as an opponent, as the enemy. I got to beat him. And they turned around. And they all went back and picked up that little boy. And arm in arm and hand in hand, in the Special Olympics, they finished the race tied for first place. That's what, that ought to be the church. That ought to be the church. Folks, we're not trying to get ahead of each other. We're certainly not trying to hurt each other. And we're definitely not trying to put each other down. But praise God, praise God, we can diligently look to the finish line and look to the Savior as the servant of all servants, the shepherd of all shepherds, and shepherd one another. You know what good parenting is? It's shepherding your children. It's training up a child the way he should go. When he's old, he'll not depart from him. The only way you can train up a child the way he should go is walk that way first. And folks, you know what this church needs more than anything? They just need some people to get in their lane, stay in, their, stay in the will of God, and encourage the person in the next lane to stay in their lane and be faithful. In the next lane, in the next lane. And then when we cross one day, we'll all take our crowns off. Right after the rapture, 1 John 2, 28, some will face him confident, some will face him ashamed, and we'll cast him at his feet. And there won't be no big shots. There won't be no little shots. There won't be anybody coming in last and, there won't be any talented person over here and none talented over there. They'll either be faithful or unfaithful. And I believe, thank God, it starts in the local church. Father, use this message. I didn't get halfway through it, but I'm not a slave to Mount Lion. I want to be a servant to your leading. And Lord Jesus, I thank you for this church with all my heart. The privilege of my life is to be a husband, to be a daddy. Yes, to be a grand granddaddy, but the great, second greatest privilege of my life is to be a called pastor. And Lord, I want to live up to that title. I don't want to just be a preacher. I'm not called to be an evangelist. I'm not called to be a missionary. God, you called me to pastor. But God, you called each person in this room and many that are listening by way of internet to be a faithful follower of peace and of holiness. And look unto you, the author and finisher of our faith, and being faithful, but considering the contradiction of sinners against Jesus and God to be faithful like you did. Help, Lord, help us to finish right. And God, we know the only way to finish right is day by day. Stay in the lane, the will of God, filled with the Spirit of God, filled with the love of God, and help those others that run with us. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I mean, say, Preacher, I'm so glad that if I died today, I'd go to heaven, and that before I get to heaven, I have a local church that I can serve through and in, that I have children that I can shepherd. You ought not take that for granted. And I got neighbors that are lost that I can reach. Y'all not take that for granted. And I got a ministry to my wife, my husband. And I got a ministry every member of Whitfield Baptist Church because I'm part of it. And I'm glad that, not a, that I'm not a member, just a member of a church, but praise God, I'm a member of the family of God. And if I drop dead today, I know I go to heaven. 
and I'll be with the family of God forever. So you might as well get used to some love and joy and peace, shouting and praising God and praising Him for eternity. But you say, preacher, I know I'm saved. Would you slip your hand up high for a testimony? You know you're saved, without a doubt. You died today, you know to go to heaven. How many glad that you're saved? Say amen. I don't mean that to put you on the spot, but the Holy Ghost and the Word of God always puts us on a fork in the road. We have to make a decision. Either reject Him or accept Him. Now, I'm not going to come to anybody. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. We don't play that game here. But I'm going to do this. I'm going to give you an opportunity to make the greatest decision you ever made. A life-changing decision. And that's to be saved. And we'll show you in the Bible, quietly and personally and privately at this altar, how you can know that you're going to heaven when you die. And you say, Preacher, I sure would like to know more about that. And I want you to pray for me, because life's too short to live for myself. I want the will of God for my life. And the will of God, 2 Peter 3, 9, is that He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It's the will of God for you to be saved. Mark the Word of God on that. You say, Preacher, I'm not saved, but I sure would like to be, and I want you to pray for me. Would you slip your hand up real high for prayer and then back down? Anyone? Real quick, be, be explicitly honest. And don't let pride keep you back. Anyone? Just slip your hand up real high, and we'll pray for you. And we say, Preacher, I'm saved. I know it for sure. But I want to be in my lane. I want to be faithful, and I don't want to be a failure. I don't want to be a castaway. I don't want to be disqualified. I just want to keep serving God, loving God, and growing with God, and and, and I just need to keep my eyes on Jesus. I need to keep my eyes on Calvary. I want you to pray for me that I'd be more faithful in the race called the Christian life. Would you slip your hand up high for prayer? i got to raise mine. Oh, I need to raise mine. I want to be more faithful. I sure hadn't arrived. Have you? Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for using this message in our hearts this morning great passage of scripture Lord I thank you dear God for the admonition to stay in the lane and pursue you with all our heart with all our soul with all our mind with all our might God be with this church God I thank you for the way you're blessing I thank you dear Lord for the way you're blessing And God, I thank you, God, for those who's been saved in recent weeks. I thank you for those that labored to get them here, drove that old bus, knocked on those doors on Sunday afternoon and Saturday. God, it's worth it. It's just worth it. So God, help us. God, help us to be faithful in the lane that you called us to be in. Your precious, precious Lord. May we be holy. May we have peace, peace as we walk with you and talk with you and worship you and serve you. In Jesus' name is our in Jesus' name and for your sake we pray. For your glory we preach. Amen.